Welcome to St. Joseph the Worker Parish. Today we celebrate the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our opening antiphon is Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Our brothers and sisters, as we come to celebrate these most sacred mysteries, we hear a challenge in today's gospel, a challenge to accept the crosses of this world, which is never easy. But always by the grace of God do we get through those moments when we are challenged to that level. So for the times that we have given up, for the times that we have turned away from that love and that grace, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture us in what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter, everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in, in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you and with your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to st. Matthew glory to you O Lord Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? What can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Could you imagine the scene? This Gospel passage follows last week's Gospel. So Peter made the proclamation of faith that we know of last week, and now all of a sudden Jesus informs them what the price of salvation would be that as he's sitting there and talking with his disciples and talking to them about how he must suffer greatly and go to Jerusalem and die upon the cross and then be raised up on the third day, he was talking about leaving behind all of his quote-unquote work and allowing himself to go according to the will of the Father. So as Peter brings him aside, you know that people aren't going to just stop looking at what's going on with Jesus and Peter. In fact, they may even perk their ears up just a little bit more, trying to eavesdrop a little bit. And I'm sure when Jesus rebuked Peter, he didn't go and say, get behind me, Satan. He probably didn't say it in a soft voice, but rather in a very strong and a commanding voice. And it echoed through. And the disciples probably were stunned in that moment. And what did Jesus do? 
He didn't try to diffuse the situation. He didn't try to all of a sudden say, okay, guys, let's, uh, let's start talking about something a little bit easier here then. He went right at it. Take up your cross and follow me. That is an invitation that is a strong and troubling invitation. You just heard what that cross means, that it's going to be rejected, that Jesus' ministry is going to be faced with trials and tribulations. It's going to be faced with struggles. It's going to be faced with discord. It's all of these things, and worse yet, it's going to be attacked by Satan, even in the midst of discipleship. Peter going to Jesus and saying, oh, Lord, you know, seriously, it can't be all that bad. There has to be an easier way. And Jesus, not backing down, challenging his disciples to take up their cross daily and follow him. And we look at a world today where that cross is very real. When we stand up and proclaim that we follow the Christ, we follow everything that the Catholic Church holds and believes from conception until natural death, that all life is sacred, every person has dignity, that all of us are called to be brothers and sisters and united for a single purpose, that the poor have preferential treatment within the love of God, that we are called to go out and proclaim that good news to all people and to allow that gift of love to overcome every oppressive force in God's name. We are to be rejected, to be renounced, even cast aside, as it often is. Oh, well, you know, I guess you're Catholic, so I guess you're supposed to believe that, but that makes no sense. Come on, get with the world today. Don't go back into the Middle Ages. You know, this is 2020. We have new ways of thinking about things, and they're going so great not. Anyway, those struggles, those trials, those tribulations, the aspect of what is family, all of those things are rooted in who we are because it's rooted in the teachings of Jesus Christ. And in those teachings, in that gift of God's love, Jesus, even before he has gone off to the crucifixion, he says, Do not be surprised if the world rejects you. Always remember, it has rejected me first. But here's the beautiful grace of that renunciation of the world, that we have followed him, and that we continue to follow him. And we recognize, not in fearing what can destroy the body, but what we fear will destroy the soul. A dear sister this week made an announcement, which was beautiful. I'm not only pro-life, I'm pro-eternal life. We are called to be pro-eternal life, to recognize what we are being offered, that sin and death no longer has power over us, and the strength of God is ours if we only rely on it, if we only trust in it. It goes back to the question of last week. Who is Jesus? If Jesus is just some nice guy, some prophet, some guy who said a couple cool things and brought a couple people together, well then, every time that we take up a cross, every time we feel that renunciation of the world, every time we are attacked by the devil and we are questioning our faith, we're just going to give in because we have no support. We have no fire. We have no nothing. But if Jesus is the Son of God and we are followers of him, we do not fight alone. And we do not carry the cross alone. We follow him. And in that, we gain our strength. We gain our spiritual fortitude. And in these, this world of light affliction, we gain perseverance and hope and a light that this world and this darkness cannot overcome. We gain strength by him who is strength and the love of God 
which permeates all things, is given to us and enlivened in our hearts, in our souls, and in our actions. My brothers and sisters, that's what we face the world with, without fear. Because even though these battles, these skirmishes, seem to be ceaseless, the war has been won. Christ has conquered the world. And in that, we have hope. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we come to today's gospel, there are stumbling blocks. There are people who will say, wow, you don't have to believe that. You don't have to trust in Jesus. Trust in yourself. It's not a real philosophy. You know, I guess it's a way of living. And sometimes all of those naysayers, all those people who are troubled, they don't only happen outside of people who do not believe. They come from nominal Catholics who are kind of believers, but, you know, they don't want to put their full boats in one hand. They don't want to put all their eggs in one basket. They just kind of want to coast through and maybe get into heaven. But if it's, they don't get into heaven, well, at least there's purgatory. Well, I hate to say it, but Jesus says, don't be look, lukewarm. Yes or no, because the lukewarm, even those I will spew out of my mouth. Like Peter, sometimes we need that strong renunciation, that strong challenge. And like Peter, we are called to live up to that challenge and to follow Christ, even to the point when we are struggling, even to the point when we might doubt because Christ is beside us, walking always by our side, taking up the cross that he went before us with, helping us with our cross, along with all the holy angels and saints, and following this King, following this Savior. There's nothing that this world can throw at us that will destroy us, for our victory is ensured Maybe not in this world, but in the heavenly grasp of God's love. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's divine providence, we turn to our loving Father in our need. We pray for the church, that we may be living examples, not afraid of anything that could harm us, but rather always strengthened by the love of God to proclaim the gift of God's love and peace in a world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
we pray for the nations of the world, that they may come to understand the great gift that God wishes to give them in the power of the Holy Spirit and have the courage to follow Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those whose faith is tested, either through the coronavirus, through the current sanctions that we are living through, and through the storms of life, whether they be real as down south, or the storms that take place through addiction or depression, that God's grace may continue to nourish, strengthen, and sustain them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for an increase of courage to answer the call to priesthood in religious life, fidelity within married life, and chastity within all walks of life, that men and women may stand up to demonstrate the love of God within our world and within their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our military personnel who are in harm's way, deployed both foreign and domestically. We pray for our firefighters, police, and first responders, and all those who watch over our cities and our towns. Continue to watch over, to guard, and to guide them always, according to your love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are struggling in any way, that as they carry their cross, they may follow Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died. That they may have the reward of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious Father, you have called us together as a family of faith to follow Christ more closely, for he is your Son, sent into the world not to condemn it, but to redeem it. And so, in strength and in hope and in perseverance, we continue to take up our crosses, to place them before Christ's, and to follow him more closely. For we ask these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. As our altar is being prepared, our offertory hymn is Unless a Grain of Wheat. my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what is celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
And we heath your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are claimed. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith.
for, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, the power and, the and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter, enter under my roof, my roof but only say, say the word, and my, my soul shall be healed.
as we come to receive Christ in a spiritual communion, our communion antiphon is blessed are they. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, O Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and serve us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a, a few announcements. As was mentioned in the letter, as well as... Um, in the Bulletin for Religious Education, we are trying to get books ordered and different things of that nature. So if you have not registered uh, for religious education, we're asking you to do so by Friday. Um, so that's this coming Friday in order for us to order books and figure out um, social distancing and all these other things that we have to kind of figure out in two weeks' time um, as we begin Religious Ed on the 27th of September. Um, so again, if you have not already registered for religious education, uh, please do so as soon as you can in order for us to know where everything is and figuring out all the T's and dotting the I's and crossing them, all that other stuff. Um, that'd be great. Also, uh, there's a lot of things that are happening coming up concerning uh, adult education as well um, on Thursday as well as on Sunday morning. So again, information concerning that is in the bulletin along with the right for Christian initiation for adults, for those who are interested in trying to learn a little bit more about the Catholic faith, um, if for those who are outside of the Catholic Church and who want to maybe see what's life like inside the Catholic Church and all that. So it gives us a great opportunity in order to try to um, kind of journey with you and teach you a little bit about what we believe as Catholics um, in our world. There's a lot of preconceived notions and uh, it's not all true. So again, if you could uh, stop by and talk to Molly um, or myself or anybody from the staff, it'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, we also welcome aboard our new uh, religious uh, director of faith formation for our primary school students. Uh, that's Caleb Cochran. Um, he'll be joining us on Monday and he'll be uh, continuing with uh, the efforts that Jim Foran left behind, uh, who's doing very well, by the way. Uh, he says hi from Canada. Um, he'll be quarantined for two weeks once he gets back home, so uh, keep him in prayer, or more like keep his wife in prayer. But in any case, um, but uh, a great opportunity uh, to continue on with uh, the great faith formation that we have here at St. Joseph the Worker. Uh, so if you see Caleb, congratulate him, but he begins his first day on Monday. Good luck to all those who are beginning um, or who have begun uh, your work in schools. I know that Williamsport Area School District is going in starting on Tuesday. Uh, so good luck with everything and please know that you're in our prayers. Uh, but if there's anything we could do to help and support, please let us know. So this and many other things as we continue to move on. Crazy that September is right around the corner, but it is. Uh, so we keep all of our students in prayer. And we ask God's blessing upon all of our students and all of our teachers as you enter into the classroom. That God may protect and watch over you always. And it's particularly for our administration as they try to understand what to do and how to move forward safely, um, trying to deal with this pandemic and everything else that's before us. So uh, please know that you're in our prayers. And for all those who are starting homeschool and cyber school, you are definitely in our prayers. So uh, good luck and uh, God bless. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. As we come to the end of this Holy Mass, please come forward to the stations at the altar railing to receive the Blessed Sacrament.